What's up guys, this is Gerard, back to you with another tutorial video on taxation. So on this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to compute income taxes for individuals. Just a review, we have three classifications of individual taxpayers, which are purely compensation earners, those with having employee-employer relationship, and then second, self-employed, those who get their income from trade or business. These also include people who practice their professions, such as doctors, lawyers, accountants, and others. And then third one, we have your mixed income earners, those individuals whose income come from both compensation and business and or practice of profession. So in this video, I'm going to be using some of the illustrative problems given by your trade law. So let's get into it. So the basic pro forma income tax computation is we have your gross income, less allowable deduction, and then we'll arrive with your taxable income. And then from that, we can compute your income tax due. So let's have this first illustration. A minimum wage earner who is not engaged in business nor has any other source of income other than from employment earn a total compensation income of 135000 Now, take note that our taxpayer here is a minimum wage earner. So, minimum wage earners shall be exempt from the payment of income tax based on their statutory minimum wage rates. The holiday pay, overtime pay, night shift differential pay, and hazard pay received by such earner are likewise exempt. So, our second illustration so this is how we would be computing her income tax. We have there the gross sales from convenience store. We add also your gross receipts from your bookkeeping. And then we deduct the amount allowed as deduction under section 24A to B, which is your 250,000. And from that, we have now your taxable income. Now take note that the taxpayer has signified her intention to be taxed at 8% income tax rate. So you have there your taxable income of 850000 Multiply that by 8%. Our tax due is 68000 Income tax payment is in lieu of the graduated income tax rate under subsection A hereof and percentage tax due by express provision of the law. So let's say, for example, she failed to signify her intention to be taxed at 8% income tax rate on gross sales in her initial quarter income tax return, and she incurred cost of sales and operating expenses amounting to 600000 and 200000 respectively, or a total of 800000 The income tax shall be computed as follows. So as you can see, what we've used here is the graduated income tax table to compute the tax due. So you have there 300,000 minus your 250 and then multiply that by 20%. So the tax due is 10,000. So on our next uh, illustration, the taxpayer signified his intention to be taxed at 8% income tax rate on gross sales in his first quarter income tax return. He has no other source of income. His total sales for the first three quarters amounted to 3 million with fourth quarter sales of 3.5 million. So the taxable income shall be computed as you have your total sales of 6.5 million less your cost of sales of 3 million and then you have your operating expenses of 1,440,000 so you have your taxable income of 2060000 And then your income tax due will be computed as you have your tax due under the graduated uh, tax rates, which is, which is 509200 And then we deduct your 8% income tax previously paid from quarter 1 to quarter 3. So you have your 220000 So your annual income tax payable would be 289,200. So the gross receipts exceeded the VAT threshold of 3 million. Taxpayer shall be liable to pay income tax under graduated rates pursuant to Section 24A, 2A of the tax code as amended. Taxpayer shall be allowed an income tax 
credit of quarterly payments initially made under the 8% income tax option computed net of the allowable deduction of 250000 granted for purely business income. Now, in this illustration, taxpayer is likewise liable for business taxes in addition to income tax. For this purpose, the taxpayer is required to update his registration from the non-VAT to VAT taxpayer. Percentage taxes pursuant to Section 116 of the tax code as amended shall be imposed from the beginning of the year until the taxpayer is liable for VAT. VAT shall be imposed prospectively. And then lastly, percentage tax due on the non-VAT portion of the sales receipts shall be collected without penalty if timely paid on the due date immediately following the month or quarter when taxpayer ceases to be a non-VAT. So in our last illustration, our taxpayer is a mixed income earner. So let's say for example, his tax due for 2018 shall be computed as follows if he opted to be taxed at 8% income tax rate on his gross sales for his income from business. So as you can see, the compensation income was subject to your graduated income tax table. Whereas for business income, you have this computation, your gross sales, which is 2.4 million, and then we add your non-operating income, so your taxable business income is 2,500,000 and then multiply that by your 8%. So your tax due on business income is 200,000. And then we add your tax due on compensation income and also your tax due on business income. So total income tax due is 513,000. So the option of 8% income tax rate is applicable only to taxpayers income from business. And the same is in lieu of the income tax under the graduated income tax rates and the percentage tax under section 116 of the tax code as amended. The amount of 250000 allowed as a deduction under the law for taxpayers earning solely from self-employment or practice of profession is not applicable for mixed income earner under the 8% income tax rate option. So the 250000 mentioned above is already incorporated in the first year of the graduated income tax rates applicable to compensation income. So what if the taxpayer did not opt for the 8% income tax based on gross sales and other operating income? So you have this computation over here. We will be combining your compensation income along with your business income and you have your taxable income of 2,310,000. So the taxable income from both compensation and business shall be combined for purposes of computing the income tax due if the taxpayer choose to be subject under the graduated income tax rates. So on our last scenario over here on February 2019, taxpayer tendered his resignation to concentrate on his business. His total compensation income amounted to 150000 inclusive of benefits of 20000 His business operations from taxable year 2019 remains the same. So he opted for the 8% income tax rate. So as you can see, the compensation income, we don't have tax for that because that's not over 250000 Whereas for the business income, we have your taxable business income of 2.5 million and then multiply that with your 8%. So tax due on business income is 200,000. So total income tax due is 200,000. And that's it. So practice is key. So try to master some of the computations that we've done here for our individual taxpayers. If you found this video very helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And as always guys, a huge thanks for watching and supporting the channel. Comment down below for any topics you want me to cover in the future. And please consider subscribing if you haven't already. So this is Gerard. Have a great day.